Hey guys, it's Rark here, and today I just wanted to go through my thoughts on the updated beta phase 4 patch notes that were announced yesterday. Um, as with my Live Letter 8 video, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything that was changed or implemented, just because there's a lot of information to go through, and some of the changes were quite minor, like bug fixes and things like that. I'll leave a link in the description there, the full patch notes, which you'll be able to access if you've already signed up to beta. If you haven't, then you'll just need to wait until August 17th to uh, get your login details and then access them. Um, just a reminder, I wanted to let everyone know that all of the data for your character and the progress that you make during open beta is going to be carried over to the full game. Um, this includes early access on the 24th. As always, there's a note from Square here which mentions that there could be some circumstances where uh, the data won't be carried over, but this is going to have to be something big, like a big uh, guild dupe or an exploit, something like that. So you shouldn't have any worries here. Uh, myself, I'm going to treat this like a uh, soft launch, and you know, you guys should too. So starting off uh, with the changes to the quest inside of things, for anyone that played version 1.0, you're going to know that the amount of quests available to you, especially at the start of the game, was really low. Uh, you were left to do a lot of grinding if you didn't have your leave quests to do. Um, this has already been improved upon massively in A Realm Reborn, and it looks as though they've increased this even more. You're now going to have additional side quests available to you, um, getting up to level 20. Again, really like this change. It means you can probably hold off on doing some of the other content, such as Guild Hess, while playing your main class. Uh, this is going to leave extra experience for you for your subclasses because you're not going to have all the experience you got the first time around from the story mission. So again, really like that. Um, they've also added additional class quests. Again, great news here. Some of the ones that are already in the game are actually really fun. And in some cases, they're pretty difficult, um, which is a refreshing change for most MMOs. Uh, you know, I hope they keep that up. But keep in mind that they're not going to be added until after the 27th of August. Um when official launches, so the new quest might be for after level 20, so you'll have to keep an eye out for them and get them done. And on a side note here, just another reminder to let you know that the voices have been added to certain cutscenes in the main scenario quest, so whether you're playing in Japan, Europe, USA, or wherever, um, you're going to be able to select the Japanese voices if you wish, and you can have English subtitles for them. I know a lot of people were looking forward to that, um, so it's good for them to know that it's now in the game. The main point here is for Guild Hess. Um, you're going to get a bonus for completing them if you aren't incapacitated or if you prefer dead. Um, this is a great change because it means Square's essentially adding bonuses to players who do encounters well um, and learn from their mistakes. It's also really nice when you want to repeat the guild Hess as you're not going to get that huge chunk of experience you get the first time around doing them. Um, so this is going to add to your overall experience points gain and helps level up your main class as well as your subclasses. So again, a really good change there. Um, more fates have also been added, which again, only see as a good change here. More content from more fates makes leveling easy, even easier and quicker. Um, and hopefully that means less running around, which is always cool, um, even if you do want to go and explore. And they've also made it so you, if you exceed the recommended level for the fate by six levels or more, you can interact with the enemies in the fate. You know, love this change. It means if you have got any higher level players on your server that want to come and grease you, then they have cans. And it also gives you more opportunity to actually hit the enemies. I know when I played in the beta, a lot of the times you go in and try and hit things and they go down so fast because there was high level people there, which meant your contribution to the fate was low, which means your experience points gained were low. Um, so again, really cool change there. Can't wait to see it in action. This is probably my favorite change of the whole patch notes, um, free companies uh, changes. So first up, you're going to have a company chest, which is going to work like a guild bank. This is so you can share um, items between your free company members. You should be able to set permissions for this so you can keep control on who can access what. Uh, you don't want you know lower level players coming in and after a day taking all your high level items. So the permissions should be there for the free company leaders and officers or however you have your free company set up. Um, you're also going to be able to accrue free company experience points and free company credits. I'm not quite sure Square have announced how this is going to be done yet but they did show what they can be spent on as you can see in the screenshot. Um, so your free company experience points will help unlock company crest. Uh, increased capacity for your company chest, which I mentioned before, and you'll also be able to fix the company chest on, uh, sorry, the company crest onto your gear. Uh, again, as you can see in this screenshot, that's a really nice touch. So you know, three companies um, have a bit of a differential between them, and you can show you which one you belong to. I also like the fact they're not too obtrusive and they're quite small, but still really detailed. So really like the way that's been done. Can't wait to get them on my gear for my free company. Um, you're also going to be able to spend the free company credits on loads of things to improve your overall gameplay experience. Uh, this is going to include things like experience bonuses, attribute gains, and improved crafting and gathering. Uh, and then it's also going to reduce things like teleport fees and duration or weakness, which is cool. Um, 
I don't think these game, uh, sorry, these bonuses should be game breaking. You know, should you forced to be in a free company? Because I know a lot of people like to play solo, even though this is an MMO. But for those of us that really enjoy playing with other people, you know, being in a free company, helping each other out, um, this is great. You know, it's going to get people into free companies, start building them up, and hopefully, Square will introduce new content or different ways to uh, get these experience points and credits in the future. So we'll have to keep a lookout for that for uh, further content. There's also a slight change to the levels that you can go into the instant dungeons with. Um, this is more than likely just a duty finder change. So, for example, in Tamtara Deepcroft, you can go in between levels 16 and 19 now, whereas before it was 16 and 18. Um, you know, this increases the amount of players that are available for that instance and hopefully should make um, queues shorter, even for DPS. So, we'll have to see how that works in uh, Phase 4 and beyond. Uh, you're also going to get a bonus if one or more of your party members have yet to clear the instance. Um, this is going to be a bonus upon completion. It's a really good change here to get people to go back and help others out. You know, a lot of time in MMOs, once, you know, a bit of time's passed, people have got to level 40, 45 or whatever, just before max level. They don't really want to go back and help even with the down-leveling system. Um, but this should get people to go back and help because they're going to get a bonus for doing so. So again, kudos to Yoshi P and the team for getting people to help each other out. Uh, and they've also changed it so that if you fail a quest, uh, a battle quest several times, you're going to get a buff um, on your character to help you out. They haven't yet said how many times you're going to have to fail before getting the buff. Uh, but I'm really in two minds about this. On one hand, you don't want the players getting bored of content they do. Um, ultimately, Square's job is to keep as many play people playing as possible. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't think it's going to help people improve their skills. You know, They're going to want to improve as they go on for the harder dungeons and the raids and the primals and things like that. Um, if they know they can just fail and get a buff to help them, I don't see why they would try and improve. So overall, I can see why Square's doing this, but I don't think I like the change very much. Um, although my thoughts on that might change when I get in and fail all the battle quests, so uh, we'll wait and see for that. And then just a small note at the end, um, the hunting logs have been added for the Arcanist class, which makes sense because that class has been added now. Um, and rank 5 has been added for all classes, so again, a little more content to help you get even more experience points. So like I just said, uh, the Arcanist is now available, which I'm sure you already knew. I'm happy about that. I've decided to play Scholar instead of White Mage, so can't wait to get going with that. Um, the main reason I added this slide though was for the point at the bottom. Um, if you're like me and you want to level, you know, you're going to level your main class, but you also want to level a load of the other classes, so you've got a tank and a DPS available, for example. You'd be happy to know you now get a bonus to experience when you're playing any class that isn't your highest level one. Um, this is going to apply to killing enemies and participating in fates. It was believed before that this buff would be gained upon getting level 50, but now it just seems as though. You're going to get it on any job or class that isn't your highest level one. So if you have a Kundra at level 30, for example, um, your, your level 20 pugilist will get a bonus to experience. So again, really great way to uh, level up those classes and you know maybe reduce the amount of grind you're going to have to do. So really like that. Next up, we've got the companion menu and the character menu, which uh, has now been implemented. You'll be able to see that you can change the head, body, and leg pieces of your personal Chocobo companion. Um, I'll show you some of the images that Square released recently. Uh, in just a second uh, but as you can see here there's also um, the attacking and healing stance options that have been added in the screenshot there should be a tanking one there too um, we already knew this was going to be in the game but it's great to finally see it there um, you know it's really good to be able to play with other people through the content but nice it's sometimes to play uh, sorry it's nice sometimes to play on your own um, you know especially if you're playing at times when not many other players were on the server um, you know I, I know for me I play a lot of the time during the early hours um, so there's not always so many people on, so it's great to have a healing companion if I was playing a tank class, or if I'm playing my scholar, it'd be great to have a DPS or a tank companion to do some damage. Um, you know, it's a really nice idea from Square. Hopefully it'll work a lot like this companion system in SWOTOR, which is really good. Uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly how it works, but it looks pretty good. So these are the um, screenshots that I promised of the companions. Um, you can see from left to right, you've got White Mage, then Dragoon, then Black Mage. Um, you know, I think you'll agree, or at least I think they look really cool. White Mage so far is my favourite out of those three. Uh, but we'll have to wait until we see the rest of the class. I think Monk will look really good too. Um, and hopefully Scholar will look okay, because that's the one I'm going to play. Um, but I don't know what companion I'm going to use yet, so wait and see for that. Now this is a change for anyone that's wanting to use a gamepad with the PC. Um, in the beta phases, I played, I used all three. I used PS3 when I was able to. Um, Xbox controller on the PC and I also use the keyboard and mouse um, so for most of the gameplay experience it's quite it's the same um, over all three uh, you know over PS3 PC pad or keyboard and mouse 
The biggest problem for me was the menu system. In the picture, you'll see that the PC menu is on the left and the PS3 one's on the right. And you're now going to be able to choose which one of these you use on PC. This is a great change. If, you, if any of you have used both of them, you'll know that the PS3 one's a lot quicker to navigate through. Um, it's a lot more intuitive than the PC one. The PC one's great if you're using the keyboard and mouse, but it's a lot slower if you're using the gamepad. So I know when I'm going to be playing gamepad on PC, I'm going to use uh, the PS3 menu because it's a lot better, and I think you will too. You'll have to give both a go to see what you prefer. But I think ultimately the PS3 one is better here. There was also a few emote changes. The one that I picked out was the visor change. So now if you use slash visor, you can open and shut your visor. Um, again, I really like this change. It gets annoying when you pick a class where in an MMO where they have a lot of helms where it doesn't show your face. Because it kind of makes it almost pointless um, selecting what your character looks like. So it's going to be covered all the time. So it's great to be able to customize it either way. You know, Some people are going to want their helms open, some aren't. Um, they've also added first person mode. Again, great for... Uh, different options for players it's not something i would use i prefer third person for a better field of view um so you can see the awesome armor that you've got but again it's really good at square to uh put in different options for different people because you know everyone plays differently this is actually one of the minor points i was chatting about that i wasn't going to include at the start of the video but it was a little frustrating for me during the beta so i wanted to put it in um if you played other mmos you'll know that the standard for reply is usually slash reply reply sorry or just slash r and that responds to someone that whispers you in beta, I think it was something like Alt-R or Alt-Shift-R, something like that. Whatever it was, it wasn't the norm. And I know, you know, we should accept change and whatever. But sometimes it's nice to have one of those little quality of life things that don't change throughout MMOs, just that you're used to. So, uh, really glad to see that in. And then last up, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got changes so you can configure the buttons on your gamepad for different options, such as Auto-Run. This is a brilliant change because before... Or you could do a change between two settings. So essentially it was whether you use circle um, or X to select things. And that's all you could change between. So I really like the fact you can now select different options. Because things like auto run are used a lot. So it's nice to be able to put it where you want to. Um, and again, customization is always great. So glad to see that in the game. So that brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for taking the time to watch today. Um, I hope there was some useful information in there for you. Um, if there was, don't forget to rate the video, um, comment and let me know your thoughts on the changes that have been put in. And also, uh, you can click on the screen now to subscribe to my channel for future updates. Um, I've also got a Twitter account set up, which is at Rock Gaming, so you can hit me up with a follow there. Um, I'm using that for updates, information, my thoughts on the game, and also uh, to link my videos. Um, I should have another video up in the next couple of days, so look out for that. Um, as I say, subscribe and follow me on Twitter. And until my next video, I'll see you guys later.